All right, this is it. Prusa just dropped their brand new Core 1, and this thing is a pretty big deal. Is this the game changer that we've been waiting for, or is this just another 3D printer promising big things? Looking at the size of this box, this thing means business. It's big, it's heavy, it's sturdy. We've got a brand new motion system, faster speeds, and of course, Prusa's legendary reliability. At least that's what they claim. But here's the thing. I discovered something about this machine that I did not expect, and honestly, it might be the most surprising thing about the Core 1. I'll discuss that later, but first, let's move this down to the workshop and unbox it. Yeah, that's heavy. Prusa has a reputation for long product life cycles. The Mark 3S Plus, for example, was released in 2020 and remained the company's flagship printer for over two years before the Mark IV launched in 2023. And while some companies push out newer machines every year, Prusa takes a slower, more methodical approach. They refine, they tweak, they update, not just hardware, but also software and firmware over time. Even with new printer releases, older models keep getting better through firmware updates. This is one of the biggest reasons people buy into the Prusa ecosystem. But now after years of waiting, Prusa finally has its first enclosed Core XY machine, the Prusa Core 1. Was it worth the wait? With a glass of champagne Yum. Not the cheap stuff But I cannot drop names Little private plane When I'm flying out to Vegas Big shades on Got me feeling like I'm famous <laughs> I'm a Don and he know it I'm giving you a shot Show up, don't blow it Cause if I'm in my zone Don't stop me flowing. Right out of the box The Core 1 feels premium It's heavy It's compact And it's clearly built For serious printing The fully enclosed steel frame Gives it a clean industrial look While the magnetically attached panels Allow for easy access And storage the setup process is surprisingly fast. Attach the screen, run the initial calibration, and you're ready to go. If you've ever used a Prusa printer before, you'll feel right at home. Connecting it to Wi-Fi is easier than ever. Just tap your phone via NFC and the printer logs in instantly. Prusa also just launched EasyPrint, a web-based slicer that foregoes a computer to prepare prints. This is a huge benefit for students using Chromebooks or anyone working from a lightweight device Combined with Prusa Connect, you can slice and send files to your printer from anywhere. Prusa's Core 1 takes everything that worked for the Mark IV and builds upon it. You still get the same neck extruder, PEI coated spring steel build plate, and the same smooth user experience. But you now get the benefits of a Core XY motion in a fully enclosed chamber. The move to Core XY makes a huge difference in print speeds and reduces the vibrations compared to the Mark IV's moving bed design. And since the printer is enclosed, it's finally optimized for high temp materials like ABS and ASA without modifications. Print volume matters. The Prusa XL is massive, the Mark IV keeps it standard, and the Bamboo A1 Mini stays compact. Sitting right in the middle, the Core 1. Big, but not oversized. 
With a build volume of 250 by 220 by 270 millimeters, the Core One gives you plenty of space to print big without taking over your desk. At this point, we've covered everything that makes the Core One great. It's build quality, reliability, upgradability, and open source ecosystem. It's a machine that feels like it was built to last. But there's a bamboo-sized elephant in the room. No matter where you turn in the 3D printing world, there it is, watching, waiting, printing at 500 millimeters a second. A machine that prints fast, calibrates itself, and practically babysits your prints. It's efficient, it's smart, it's unsettling. One's a methodical engineer carefully turning every detail. The other is a caffeinated AI robot screaming, trust the algorithm. It sees everything. It knows when your print is failing before you do. And sometimes, I swear, it's looking at me. Is it a 3D printer or is it planning something else? Anyways, uh, let's talk about uh, print quality. Right away, you get consistent first layers thanks to Prusa's load cell auto bed leveling. The new chamber temperature management system prevents warping and adjusts fan speeds based on your filament type. One small but thoughtful addition is the adjustable vent system on the top of the enclosure. This lets you control the airflow depending on the material you're printing, printing PLA, open it up to prevent overheating. Need to retain heat for ABS? Close the vent. It's a simple but effective feature that gives you more control over print conditions. Compared to the Mark IV, prints have better overhangs and sharper details, thanks to the improved motion system. Against the Bamboo X1, the Core 1 still holds up well, but it prints a bit slower when using the default profiles. But there's one feature that is often overlooked, it's the ability to fine tune the motion system with the Prusa accelerometer. This external add-on, which is also used with the Mark IV and the XL, lets you run input shape calibration to reduce vibrations and improve print quality. By default, Prusa has already tuned the Core 1 for decent print speeds, but every machine is slightly different. Running accelerometer tests lets the printer measure and optimize vibrations specific to your unit, which can lead to sharper details, smoother surfaces, and even reduce print times. The best part is it's super easy to do. Just attach the accelerometer, run the calibration, and let the Core 1 adjust the motion settings automatically. Here is a direct comparison. This is the same model printed before and after running input shaper calibration. The difference? Fine details are crisper, ghosting is reduced, and edges look more defined. It's not a massive change, but for high detail prints, it makes a noticeable difference. If you're buying a new Core 1, the cost of it is about $1,200 pre-assembled, or about $950 US as a DIY kit. One of the biggest advantages of the Prusa ecosystem is that you're never locked into one printer forever. If you own a Mark IV-S, you can upgrade to a Core 1 instead of replacing your entire machine, and believe it or not, you could technically upgrade a 7-year-old Mark III all the way to a Core 1 through a series of upgrades. It's not practical, but it is practically possible. Beyond just the machine itself, Prusa offers several optional add-ons. There's a chamber camera for remote monitoring, a hardened steel nozzle for abrasive materials, the GPIO hacker board for automation, accelerometer for fine tuning your prints, and the advanced filtration system for filtering out those nasty particulates. You can customize the Core 1 to fit your needs rather than being stuck with a fixed configuration. One of my favorite parts of 3D printing is capturing visually stunning time lapses. My current setup with the Bamboo Labs A1 relies on one simple trick. I use a limit switch that gets tapped by the tool head to trigger the camera. This method works, but it's not very flexible. The trigger happens at one fixed point, and I don't have fine control over the exact timing. Enter the Prusa GPIO or Hackerboard module. Instead of relying on a physical switch, I can send custom G-code triggers from my machine directly to my camera. And this lets me capture frames at a specific layer height after print pauses or even when lighting conditions change. So before we start making time lapses, the only problem with the Hackerboard is that the process of uh, setting it up is a little bit involved.
So that was the first attempt with the hacker board. It turned out pretty well, but the only problem is that in the very front, as you'll see, there was a, a bar, it's like a metal bar, that actually prevents um, my camera from seeing the print, which is kind of a problem for time lapses. So for my second attempt, I harnessed the power of the banana to try and figure out a uh, solution to um, the time lapse problem. So the second time lapse actually turned out pretty well. Um, I wasn't super happy with the stringing that was on the model of the Banana Man model, Banana Man model. And so I reached out to uh, my friend uh, Martin, who actually runs another YouTube channel, Zemister. I'll put the link down below. Um, he's a wizard. He helped me to figure out the solution, which ended up being something super, super simple, which was something that had to do with the layer height, which is ridiculous because I custom coded all the G code and it was one silly little thing that actually uh, worked. But he actually details the whole process of how this time lapse is done. So definitely check out his videos and tutorials because he shows how to do this process, which is pretty rad. So without further ado, the final time lapse. And because Prusa's system is fully open source, I can integrate additional automations like turning off lights between captures or moving a robotic arm to remove prints for continuous time lapses, which is a video for another day. It's an entirely different level of control compared to the Bamboo A1 setup. So which is better? If you just want something simple, the Bamboo A1 limit switch method is plug and play. But if you want total control over your time-lapse settings, the Core One's GPIO module is by far the better system. So what is on my wish list for the Core One S Plus or whatever iteration that they have? Um, it is a great machine, but no printer's perfect. Here's what I'd love to see in future iterations. Number one would be a built-in camera standard. Right now, it's a $40 add-on, but many competitors include cameras mm. by default. Higher max temp hot end, 290C is good, but something closer to 350C would open up industrial filaments. And last, I really wanna see Prusa's answer to the Bamboo AMS system. The MMU3 is usable, but far from perfect, and its overall footprint scattered across the surface of your desk or workspace needs to be tidied up into a more streamlined package. Prusa's Core One is not the fastest printer on the market, but it's arguably the most reliable. The combination of proven proofs of hardware, a fully enclosed design, and a robust open source ecosystem make it a great choice for anyone looking for a workhorse machine. But what do you think? Does the Prusa Core 1 fill the gap in their lineup, or is it too little, too late? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you found this video helpful, consider subscribing for more in-depth content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.